everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach, and here we talk about overlanding, gear, builds, DIY, all sorts of stuff related to modifying your vehicle. And some of you maybe follow me on Instagram, and if you don't, I definitely recommend you go check out my content over there. It's a bit of a highlight reel, so if you're here on YouTube and you like the long form content, it may not be your thing. But some of you might have seen that uh, I'm working with Ascend Fabrications uh, to kind of switch up the front end of the vehicle a little bit. So uh, I have a lot of other modifications I'm planning on doing in 2024, and I think this new Baja Mid Pro bumper from Ascend Fabrications is really gonna fit my needs and it looks really awesome. So don't get me wrong, I really love the C4 Fabrication Low Pro front bumper. For a lot of you out there that aren't trying to do an insanely overland styled build, or maybe you're just trying to do something smaller towards your front end that allows you to run a winch, there are some nice options with running that low pro front bumper. However, some things I wanna do make the front end look a little more aggressive and to keep the weight down still, I think this is gonna be a really sweet option. Not to mention, you know, one of Ascend's kind of motives for designing this bumper is a lot of pre-runner style bumpers out there on the market right now don't allow you to run a winch, and so this still retains your ability to run a winch, and they've designed it around using the Badlands 12,000 pound winch already, so it, it's kind of a perfect fit since that's the winch that I run from Harbor Freight. So there's a couple of different configurations. I'm gonna walk you through all that and sort of show you. So I'm here in their shop and we're gonna do a bit of an install. I'm gonna show you some of the different options for this bumper and then we'll get it actually put on the Forerunner and we'll show you a bit of a reveal at the end. I think it's gonna turn out sweet. All right, let's jump right into it. Okay, so I'm gonna just walk you through a couple of the different optioning for this bumper before we actually get it installed. So. Right here, this is not technically included with the bumper, but it's a nice add-on. And this is actually compatible with most Forerunner front bumpers. There's a few that don't, uh, but almost all do. And there's an inclusion criteria on their website to kind of walk you through this. But what these do is there's you know three tacked on nuts on either side of the front of your Forerunner. And you basically can hit those off with like a flathead screwdriver or a punch and a hammer. They're not really super secured. And the bracket that they're on is okay, but I wouldn't say insanely strong. And this bracket in particular here is ridiculously overbuilt. And so what you can do is basically remove those nuts and replace it with this. What then happens is you'll use bolts and nuts to bolt on your actual front bumper and we have class 10 hardware that goes in right here, which is actually an upgrade from the OEM hardware being class eight. So I'm mentioning all these things because the, if you have these brackets already, the included mounting hardware for the bumper is slightly different. I think if you were to buy these with the bumper, but um, this is also all the hardware to mount up these brackets. So it's not super relevant for my install, but I'm just saying this if you were to decide to purchase these from Ascend Fabrications. So then moving on, we have sort of two different ways to option this bumper. I'll throw a couple of photos up on the screen to sort of show what the two will look like. Um, but essentially, if you want to run a 30 inch light bar, you can. This should be compatible with Diode Dynamics and Baja Designs front light bars, as well as some others, really, if it's a 30 inch light bar, there's a fair amount of clearance. And what you're seeing right here is a flange piece that you can run if you're not running the light bar. So if you decide to run the bull bar option, or if you uh, have really sort of hacked up your front bumper cover, like I have with my low pro install, uh, this is a way to sort of reinforce it. So we've got some tabs up here to zip tie that grill in place because we're cutting off almost all of that lower cover. And then we've got these nice cutouts here to run wiring harnesses through to the top of the bumper. So a lot of you that might consider running this bull bar might also want to run some pods under the bull bar. That's kind of a look that a lot of guys go for. We've got you know four or so pods right here, but you could run three, you could run five, kind of whatever you want to do. And we've got the cutouts there to run those harnesses over. So those are sort of the options. But at the end of the day, if you didn't want to run any of them, you could also just cut your cover really nicely and just run the bumper alone with no lights or bull bar or light bar. 
So this hardware is a mixture of either grade eight or class 10 hardware. And so that's where the color difference is, but it's really durable hardware. And that's just everything you'll need to attach the light bar or the grill guard. Over here, we've got just the hardware for the actual bumper. There's not too much included here, but he actually mentioned that he imports this black hardware for the front aluminum plate uh, from Europe because it's really hard to source black stainless hardware in the US and most people just anodize silver hardware that eventually fades or turns purple. So that's a nice little touch. These are the same plates that are in there, but these ones have been powder coated. Since my rig is blacked out, I've got just about everything all powder coated. So here's the actual bumper. And uh, as we start to install it and get the winch mounted up, you'll see a little closer look, but I'm really excited to get this all squared away and put on the vehicle. So a small design feature that I think is really cool and uh, I'd like to kind of show you guys so that you can appreciate it maybe a little bit more than just seeing the finished bumper, but these are all of the independent parts you would get in the DIY kit for this bumper. But what I think is pretty interesting and also pretty cool is Remember how I talked about these reinforcement plates? So the cool thing is, is this is the back of your bumper. So if you look over here, here's that, that channel right there, here's the other channel. This channel is right where this bracket is gonna support. And so what's really cool is a lot of you maybe go out and buy reinforced toe points for the front of your Forerunner. This is kind of how this toe point works and not all bumpers are designed this way, but you have this reinforcement bracket that goes right here. This is gonna hook into your bumper. You then have the back of your bumper. The side plate here on the bumper is this piece right here, which fits right in there. All right, so then you have the side plate and this rectangular tubing. Those all fit together just like that. This piece is gonna come right in here. I don't need to probably perfectly get it to fit, but you kind of get the idea. So this piece actually protrudes out through the framing of the bumper, but it comes all the way back through your bumper back to these mounting points. And then these two pieces weld around on this piece. So when you have a shackle up front here, when you pull on this, you're not pulling on just welds that are on the front of this rectangular tubing, but it's pulling on this piece of steel right here, which comes all the way through, has multiple welds that are pulling on this plate, and this plate is mounted to those reinforcement brackets. So there's just a lot of layers of strength throughout the design of these shackle points, which really allow for safe recovery. So I think that's a cool design feature to just show you guys. Okay, so we got everything basically hooked up for now. Uh, this should be just about ready to mount up on the vehicle. Uh, these front bumpers are really not a super involved install. So I completely forgot my fair lead at home uh, but this Factor 55 one is not like a plated chrome like the Badlands one is. So I might end up just buying this from Ascend because honestly, um, it looks better. And so we'll see. But that's why there's a Factor 55 on there. If you're like wondering, oh, Zach, you've never talked about Factor 55 ever. Like, that's why. Uh, got this hooked up here. One thing I am going to do, and you'll see this once it's mounted up, there's some AC lines or coolant lines or something that are back here on the Forerunner, as well as like this center, like, I don't know if it's a piece of the body or some bracket or something, but it's nice to move this winch as far forward as we can so that we've got plenty of space when we actually mount it up. So if you actually look in the back here, we have sliding tabs for mounting up the winch. And if you look too, there's this, all this space below, because we have that front plate that's removable, uh, we can actually access all this really easily. So I was just reaching in there, I put in my bolts, just gotta tighten them down. So that is super slick for doing the winch install. And then sort of another thing to note, there's lots of mounting options on this bumper. So you can see in here, we've got a slot here and we've got a slot here. So if you wanna put in some pods, you can, so like a, a three inch pod, like an SS3 or Baja Designs, either way, like you could put that right in there and it fits really nicely. And then up top here, we've got tons of different mounting options as well. So you've got this whole channel up here. So if you wanted to mount a uh, light bar, if you wanna mount pods, if you wanna mount SS5s, if you wanna mount LP9s, like the world's your oyster, there's lots of options, obviously, not all of them are tested and have been fit properly by Ascend, but you know, there's a lot of options up here if you wanna go wild and do something cool with lights. You've got a lot of different mounting spots. 
We've got some spots over here as well to mount. You may need to build some sort of little adapter bracket or maybe a send will offer them, depending upon what you wanna mount down here, but you could. There's also this little gusset back here that he was like, oh, well, we could just add a little slot in there as well. So this would be perfect for rock lights or another light. I mean, you could even do a full pod and angle it down or do something. There's lots of options and lots of, you know, potential. So really sweet and it's gonna be fun to get some lights and other aftermarket stuff mounted up here as well. So, all right, well, I think this bumper is basically ready to go. Now we're gonna start getting it mocked up on the vehicle. All right, I wanna quick interrupt the video and just mention one of my sponsors from this year is Beadlock Coffee. What you're looking at here is a five pound bag of coffee. And one thing I wanna mention is, you know, Beadlock Coffee is a small roaster who's kind of in the off-road space, but he makes great coffee. I've been drinking this coffee now since November. It's basically the only coffee I drink. And if you buy a five pound bag with my discount code, it's about $80. Now, this may sound expensive to you if you're used to buying coffee at Costco, but really it's a great value if you're trying to buy, uh, you know, higher end sort of single roasted coffee. And so go check him out. I think this coffee is really good. I've really enjoyed it and you may enjoy it as well. And it's a pretty good way to drink some of this more craft style coffee at a discounted price. So you can support a guy in the off-road space. You can support me and you can get great coffee for a good deal. I can't get coffee this good anywhere around here in Minnesota for this price because honestly, craft coffee is just starting to get kind of expensive. So having good beans definitely is worth it and you can get five pound bags now. I'll link it all down below. Thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so we've got the bumper kind of mocked up here. We used a jack right under the winch to just get this lined up and sorted. Uh, right now we've got the little silver bolt in there holding on either side. Uh, but right before we actually mounted those two up, there's one right down there and one right in there. Before we got those two bolts up, I just connected all of the wiring for my winch. So if some of you haven't seen, I just have this like basic plate that allowed me to mount my winch control box right down here, right down in there. So that allowed me to fit this easily and not rub on any of the lines down there so it's kind of hard to show so if you look down in there this big bar coming across some of that you have to bend and my camera is struggling to focus but there's a lot down there that's sort of in the way so you're going to want to relocate your control box and that allows you to kind of fit all this really easily so that's what i've done in the past and it's all routed and ready to go okay so we just got everything sort of mocked up here we're not actually mounting up this light bar on the forerunner today but i just wanted to show you what it looks like so um, once we put those two bolts in there there's three bolts on each side with a washer and then there's a washer and a nut on the back side i can show that in a little bit here but if you want to put a 30 inch light bar on here there's this flange piece and you can see how tight everything fits on the front of the forerunner it's pretty tight and almost perfectly vertical with this trd pro piece but this is similar to any of you with just like a toyota emblem in the middle that's essentially it we'll pull this off and i'll just show you how you mount your light bar in this piece but it's super straightforward and then there's little zip tie holes in the top so if you want to hook this all into your grill in case your grill feels a little wobbly you can definitely do that okay and we pulled that piece off the front so this is your 30 inch light bar just sitting here we've got the mounting hardware that's included with the light bar there's no mounting hardware for your actual light bar included because it's different for each light bar uh, but basically you can just use 
uh, a little nut on the actual threaded portion of the bolt to tighten that down. So you just get the shaft started enough into the side of the light bar and you can use some spacing washers and then that allows you to really tighten this in to the, uh, to the space. So the space here is about 32 inches and if you add a couple of washers in there, you can use it to space it out properly so you really don't pinch in the bracket here too bad. It will fit your light bar nicely. And then to actually mount this whole piece up to the front of the bumper, we've got a bolt here with a washer on top and bottom with this nylon locking nut. It's designed with this sliding channel so that you can preset these bolts. So what you'll do is on these channels here, you can get this bolt in and designed right where you want it to be and basically tighten down almost all the way. You come over here with your light bar, slide that channel over the bolt, and then you can tighten it down that last you know eighth or quarter turn so that it's tightened down to your bumper. And that is how you'd mount it up. There's four channels, so you're just gonna pick the four spots along here that gets it lined up perfectly inside of your bumper cover. So because I'm doing the pod option, he has this nice little flange sort of decorative piece that's gonna go behind there that helps to cover up where I've previously cut my cover, but also allows you to have that recessed space because what we found is if you wanna leave your cover exactly how it comes from the factory, it starts to stick into this space. So this will allow us to install the bull bar and fit the pods underneath and it will provide an area to route wires, but also keep it clean looking and not just like there's a cut bumper behind everything. So all you do is you slide it in through that bottom opening inside of the grill, and then it holds in place with some zip ties. And my version doesn't have it, but you can either put some tape, like double-sided 3M, like that padded tape underneath here to stick to your bumper cover, or there will be holes, so then you can put a zip tie through and drill a couple holes in the cover underneath to hold it in place. So there we put a little bit of that tape on the back side there. Then we're gonna do the same on this side. All right, well, we got the bumper all set up now with kind of the, the setup I'm gonna be running for a bit. I don't have pods in yet, so kind of using these pods on loan, uh, but we've got the bull bar all set up. We've got the pod fairing piece back here all set up. And the bull bar goes in really easily. There's weld in nuts on this side and this side within the bar to put a bolt up through on the outside here. And then there's two small bolt heads on the inside that you can access right through here down below. You go in there and then you can tighten them down. So there's those two right there. And then putting the pods on is just matter of playing around with spacing in these channels. So it wouldn't be too hard in the future too if you wanted to switch between the LED light bar to pods or something like that. So yeah, man, turned out pretty sharp. I'm really excited. Like I said, I think it really turned out sweet. It's gonna be a little bit of a more aggressive look, but stay tuned for some of the coming modifications because I think this is really gonna look nice. And uh, if any of you are going to the Moore Expo, that is uh, an Overland Expo here sort of in the Midwest. I believe it's in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, go check out their website. Uh, I'll be there in the Sherpa booth. So if you wanna see this new bumper or you wanna see anything else on the Forerunner, I'm gonna be at that expo coming here in April. I think it's like the 18th through 20th or something. So definitely uh, that's one area you could see this bumper in person since there's not a lot of them out there right now. And if you really want to get on a list or order one of these when they come out, uh, that would be a way to see it in person. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.